had a great weekend and thank you to everyone who sent in your R2D2s. They were brilliant. Well, it's back to homeschooling today. So here's your little treat and break for today. We're gonna to be doing a tropical island. So get out your pencil and paper, let's get drawing. Okay, so we're gonna start the week with some gorgeous palm trees. I love palm trees. So we're gonna start with some curves because the, the, the top of the palm tree is a lovely curve. Can you see how softly I'm doing it? Now, what I want us to be doing today when we're doing our drawing is holding the pencil about halfway up really loosely, loose grip. Look at the difference if I go and press like that. Lots of people think that you draw in the same way as you write, but you don't. You draw in a very different way. You draw very softly and loosely. So I want you to practice doing a few palm, palm tree leaves on your scrap paper. So it's a really simple shape. And then a curve, what's well, like an umbrella really underneath. So let's just do one or two on our on our warm-up sheet. And these are the kind of things when you're sitting down, you've got a bit of paper and you're scribbling. You could scribble palm trees, palm leaf, palm trees and little palm leaves all over it. It's a really nice, easy thing to draw. So it's just a curve and then some smaller curves underneath. So just have, an, have a bit of an experiment. Have an experiment of drawing them hard and then have just see the difference it makes when you do them softly. And just do a few of those for a minute or two on your warm-up sheet and then we'll come on to the lesson. So we're going to start our, our tropical island here by drawing in a horizon line. Now a horizon line is where the sand or where the sea meets the sky or where the edge meets the sky and it's always got to be straight. So I've been teaching a lot over the last few weeks about drawing straight lines but here with horizon lines I will always use a ruler. So we're going to go about a third of the way up so I think it's probably just a few centimetres up and it needs to be exactly the same on both sides. So I'm going to go about four centimetres up. It really doesn't have to be four centimetres up on yours. Um, and that's going to be our C. But it, the key is that it must be a straight line. I did a painting once and I got to the end of it. It was a really big painting. It's actually hanging on the wall just behind me or over there. And I got to the end and I couldn't work out what was wrong. And it was the fact that this line wasn't straight. That always has to be straight. So that's our nice straight horizon line to start. So that was pretty easy, wasn't it? And we're going to put in a little bit, the edge of our tropical island coming down to meet the sea. So I just want you to put in a little curve down there, down to the sea like that. It's about a third of the way in. And this is a real rule, a good rule of paintings where you think about it in thirds. So you split your paper in thirds and you put your juicy bits, your key bits of interests, thirds of the way in. So we've got our horizon line, we've got a little bit of the island. Now we're going to put in the very basic shapes for our boat. So we're going to start, go back again, about a third in. I'm always saying a third in. And we'll just put a little line like that and a much smaller one on the other side because that's going to be the bottom of the boat. And then we'll just join those lines. You see how lightly I'm pressing? You press even lighter than me. If I pressed as lightly as I would usually, you wouldn't even probably be able to see the, the marks I'm making. Now, we're not gonna do a mast here. What we're gonna do is just have our sails sort of almost floating up. So give yourself a dot for where you want your sail to be and another dot there. And we're gonna take it in a nice line. But you can see it's, if it was straight, it would be like that. So it's just off the straight and then there so i've got this little gap with the boat and this one here curving in slightly so it's not a triangle can you see it's just a slightly adapted triangle and this one we're going to overlap this second sail here and we'll come up there like that and take it in so that's your first few shapes so if you get in the horizon line if you haven't got a ruler handy just get a book or a magazine or something just so you get that nice straight line your island and you bet. So if you pause it, you get those bits in. So the next bit, we're going to put in our either rising or setting sun. I know you can decide whether it's a rising sun or a setting sun. But I'm just going to curve that really gently around to there. And then we'll start off our palm tree. Now, I'm going to 
Work out where you want. You can have more than one. I'm just putting one in. You could have two or three in. And if you are going to put two or three in, just have a little think about where you want these to be. Okay, so we're going to start with those two dots and we're going to curve this in. So the key with the palm tree is we don't want it as a straight up. It's that lovely curve coming in there and make sure that it's wider at the bottom than the top. Can you see that? We've got that much wider at the bottom. Right, and then coming up to here, let's put the two, the sort of middle leaves in. So it's a curve. Remember we did this in the warm up. It's a curve and another curve there. And then we'll just take that leaf out really loosely. And the same on the other side. So you can do it like a jaggedy like that. So it's not as even as the ones we did on the on the warm up. It's a kind of jaggedy line, but you can do them even if you like. And we'll just pause there and you get the sun and the bit of the palm tree. Okay, so we're going to add some more leaves in now onto this palm tree. So you've got that basic shape there. Let's pop another one up there. One more curve there. I'm going to put in another curve sort of here, curving out, and then just a slightly smaller one there. And then remember underneath, we've got that kind of underneath the umbrella little lines there. Two, three, and the same up here. And if you want, you could put a couple of little coconuts into it as well. So there's the palm tree done and you finish off your picture with just a few little birds. Now here, this is your, this is your basic tropical island, but you need to make it into your tropical island. Now on my tropical island, I think what I would possibly have is buried treasure because you'd want something to do while you were there. So I'm gonna put just for me a little X marks the spot of my buried treasure and I might pop a little flag in too so the flag would just be a couple of lines as if it's blowing in the breeze but that's for my treasure island I haven't put it on the guide because you can put whatever you want on there and I'd be really interested to see what you put on your treasure island so you can colour it in now you can use your crayons or if you stick with us, we're going to show you how to paint it. So we're going to paint our island. So you can do this in any way you want. I'm going to actually do, show you how to do a background wash using watercolour paints. And I'm going to do the details in watercolour pencils. Um, if you have these at home, you can use these, or if you've just got the pencils, you could do the wash with the pencils. If you've just got a paint, you can do the whole thing in the paints. And our shop did open this weekend, so you can now go online to the Little Art School and buy um, buy these paints, and we can uh, post them to you. It's um, through our through our our shop that uh, we're running from dining room tables. So we're going to start with a, a bit of a wash, a background wash, and all you need is your water there. And I'm going to do two. I'm going to keep these really light. You know, I was saying when, when we were doing the drawing, it could be an evening or it could be a morning. And if it was an evening, think about those evening sunsets, deep oranges and, and reds and yellows. Well, I'm going to do an early morning one, which quite often is a lovely sort of pale pink. So let's try that. Yeah, that, oh, that's just right. Did you see how little paint I put in there? Such a tiny amount. And I might do one with a tiny bit of purple because sometimes you can have a kind of purpley, pinky dawn. So, oh, that might be too strong, but you saw the difference, right? So there we go, I've got that. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put in a little invisible force field here around my sun. Oh, that was a non-clean brush there. So if that happens, there you go. Pretty easy to pull it up there. Okay, so going around the sun like that with a bit of water, and going round my boat as well because I just don't want my sky colours going there. So all I'm doing here is using plain water and that will build a sort of force field. And I've, my brush isn't loaded with water either. It is really very, um, 
I'm going to go where my flag is just damp, really, rather than wet. And I'm not going to worry about the trees. I'll paint over the tree, but I want to keep the tree trunk. So that's my force field down. And now I can start popping in bits of pink here. Look, can you see it's very light? I want it to be really subtle here. So if I wanted it to be a darker pink, if you wanted a really dramatic sky here, you just need to add a touch more pink pigment into your wash there, but I want mine to be really light. So I'm going to go pale pink around here. Watercolours are so good for this, just for this ability to really just be very subtle. So I'm putting the purple in the top, but I don't want there to be a stripe. Watch here, once they meet, they'll just mingle. Can you see that? See how they mingle down and I'll take that a little bit here. When that dries, it'll be a lovely, um, very pale wash, which will which will just be a nice sort of morning, early morning backdrop to my tropical scene. So we'll leave that to dry for a minute or two, then we can come back. Okay, so this has dried really nicely. You can see it's dried even paler than I did it because watercolours will always go a bit paler. So I'm going to go in now with um, my watercolour pencils. And with the, um, the trunk of the palm tree, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go put the pigment at the edges and then at like that around, just in little semicircles, tiny, tiny little curves really around the trunk so that we get that effect. And then if I take my really small brush here and I'll just put a touch of water just here at that, can you see? So it retains, still retains those marks, but it's turned it all. And I'll do, I'm gonna do the same with the leaves. I'm going to go round the edges like that. Maybe a little bit of, of paint pigment on the insides of them. Not too much though. And I'll just take my brush and turn those slightly. You see, give it that lovely tropical island, palm tree, dark green, but it's keeping the marks inside. Okay. And then I think I'll just pop my little coconuts in there as well. I'm not going to turn those into paint. Um, with my flag, I think I'll just do a nice bright red, although that may, maybe will make it look like it's... Give it a couple of stripes. I don't want it to look like it's a, um, a life... Um, what do they call it? You know, the on the beach where they've got like a red warning flag. Although maybe it should have put far too much water on this. I'll just take that up. And here, with this bit here at the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my yellow ochre coming down like that and lightly colour it. And I'm going to add in a few marks in the burnt umber. And you'll see as soon as I turn, I touch it with my brush. That'll turn and it'll keep the, the yellow ochre, you know, because that, I think that really looks like a good sand colour. But that just makes it a little bit more interesting with having a burnt sienna in it as well. So we'll leave that to dry so I can do the sun. And with the bow, I'm going to keep mine really simple here. I'm just going to go outline it really with a with a black and, um, and keep it simple like that. But this is your boat, so please feel free have colourful sails, you could really decorate it and make this absolutely your own. For mine, look at that, I'll just for simplicity's sake, I'll just keep it very bare. But just by touching the edges there, I can bring a little bit in just to shade it slightly. And then I'll put my little birds in, in my black, and I'm going to do the same with my so all I need to do now to finish it off is my lovely sort of pale early morning sun, which I'm going to do here in a sort of light lemon yellow. And I'm going to put quite a bit of um, paint on that, Make sure, making sure my brush is dry because it's just been in that black. So it will still have black pigment on. So you see, I didn't colour all of it. I just coloured the edges, but there's enough paint pigment on there to take it right to the edge. And to finish off my island scene, I'm just going to put a lovely 
cerulean blue sea in. I might add a touch of green in there as well. So if I make a really strong horizon mark, and go down like that. And with my watercolour pencils, if I add a touch of green in too, and then here's the magic bit. Let's turn all that to pink. See, we've got that lovely tropical sea. Although the weather's so beautiful up here on the west coast of Scotland, our beaches are looking a little bit like this as well at the moment. We get out for our daily exercise. So that's it. That's the tropical island finished. And we would love to see yours. So please, please make sure you you posted some pictures in comments. Hope you really enjoyed that. And don't forget, I've just given you a basic there. You can take it off and make it into your own. Why don't you have a look at the parrots and pirates that we did last week? You could add in some of those into your island as well, or even some ships in the background, whatever you want to do. Um, hope that you loved it. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow's lesson will be available from 11 a.m. Tuesday, and we are going to be going to the circus. So we will see you then. Mm -hmm.